Uh, but first, though, we've been overwhelmed by the sheer number of just beautiful and heartfelt messages many of you have sent to Brenda after our show in tribute to her son, Jamal, yesterday. Well, last night, hundreds of people gathered at a mural to Jamal in his hometown in West London, and Brenda was there too. Um, we spoke to her this morning, didn't we, Kelly? Yeah. And um, singing last night has certainly taken it out of her voice. She's very raspy um, this morning. Um, but she's she's doing all right. She's really thankful for what we did yesterday, Linda, yeah. um, uh, on the programme. Because I know it wasn't an easy one for any of us, but she really does appreciate it. Yeah. She really does. And you watched it as well, didn't you, Kelly? Uh, yeah. I know, it's difficult. I know. Yeah, it really is. Um, I think, you know... What makes it, lots of people said to me, you know, how are you managing? And this is not, you know, anything, I'm not taking anything away from Brenda, but I think what's so difficult is Brenda's story. You know, like when you think about one person and everything that that one woman has had to go through in one lifetime. Um, when I think about that compounded, I just, it just, you know, just breaks my heart. Mm. Um, I couldn't work yesterday. I was trying really hard to focus at, at Holly Oaks and trying to do my job and I, ju I just couldn't do it. Yeah. Um, and in all the years that I've been a professional, um, I've never said I, ca I can't do my job. Never, ever said that. I just couldn't hold it together yesterday. So um, very privileged to be in this seat today. I just yeah. felt when um, I was rung on Sunday night and told, I just felt, oh God, I was way out of London, so I couldn't go and see her. And if I just wanted to hug her because I worked with her last Friday and then we went, oh, cheerio, see you next week. And, you know, she was her usual bouncy, super loud, jolly Brenda self. And, you know, we were hugging each other last Wednesday and I wanted to hug her on Sunday. And then it just brought back to me that moment of loss because, you know, I lost my only nephew in a terrible incident that came completely out of the blue. Uh, when he'd been out for dinner with his dad and came home and literally ha collapsed and went into a coma and never recovered. And I went to see him in hospital and that was it. Then he just died. And I just think nothing prepares for you for no. that moment of someone so close to you dying. And you go through so many emotions, rage, that you haven't been able to do anything. But I just know that Linda knows that, I'm um, sorry, Brenda knows that we love her so yeah. much and we're there for her in whatever way we can be. Yeah, we spoke about that yesterday, didn't we, Linda? Yeah. The fact that we are, you know, we're a tight family when one of us hurts. We're, we're not work hurt. colleagues, we're friends. Yeah. We all yeah. get on really, really well. We all socialise together. But you guys did an amazing job. No, Charlie, not only, no, all honestly, of you did as a team, you but did. you just really held it together because it's a difficult balance, paying respect, but also hosting a show, so, you know, dealing with your own feelings and your own your own emotions as well, I think you did yeah. an, a sterling job. Yeah, and we just... Well, at the end of yesterday's show, um, I was in a dilemma myself. I just thought I'd want to go around and see Brenda, but I didn't want to intrude because I'm not family or whatever, although I've known Brenda for many, many years. So um, we all got some flowers and we all signed a card and I thought I'll just drop it in as I'm going home. So I got the card to take me to her house. And um, I got there and I thought, I'll just knock on the door and just leave some flowers and the card there and just say, like, we're all thinking of you. But um, Tanisha came to the door and said, oh, no, come in, Mummy, wants you to come in. Brenda was sitting on the stairs on the phone and that. And um, she said, go in, I'll come in in a minute. And then I went into the kitchen and they made me a cup of tea and then she came in and she went to me, don't cry. <laughs> 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 I promise I won't cry. I <laughs> know, yeah. But uh, I don't think it's hit her yet. I mean, she's no. just all over the place, isn't she? And Tanisha yeah. as well. I mean, I think what's, what's really beautiful and I know on my Instagram um, uh, screen and on, on Twitter, just the beautiful pictures and the wonderful words of Jamal have been just wonderful. It just got me thinking that, that I know we tend to have national treasures that come from a particular sector of society in this country. But I think the reaction to Jamal's death, and I'm sure that at that mural, those flowers, that, that mountain of flowers is just yeah. going to get bigger and bigger and bigger over the next few weeks. And I believe that, that for especially within my community, and not just, not just the London thing, I think outside of London too, he was a national treasure, and I think... Yeah. That's, that's a phrase I'd love us to start using a lot more with Jamal because I believe that that's exactly what he was. And when you see just how heartfelt and just how upset people are, whether or not they've met him, 
And I think that's what a national treasure He changed so many people's he lives, people's didn't lives. he? He really did. He does. Um, and I know that many of you watching have sent so many wonderful messages of love and support. And, and Brenna knows all of that and she appreciates um, every single one of you getting in touch. And we will continue to support her in the way that, that we have, you know, as she tries to do with losing her beautiful boy.